What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Movie Files. Joining me, as always, is little brother Jace. Bro Shot, how are you tonight? Doing well. How are you, sir? Cooling. So much to talk about. I don't even know which way to start, which way to go. Why don't we go with the show that I neglect way too often to talk about first? Let's go with The Last of Us. <laughs> Show's still awesome. Um, Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a show where I can just pencil in that it's going to be really good every week. And so far, it has come so far from ever disappointing me, where it's just like, I agree with everything you guys are doing. And this time, you know, there are little traces from the game that I pick up. It's been probably 20 games, maybe even 30 since I played it. So I don't remember every set piece and everything that's going to happen. I knew what was going to happen at the end of it all in Survive, and during Survive. And I was pretty sure I remember what was going to happen at the end of this episode. But so much cool stuff. I love how the show just doesn't care about, hey, we need to have these infected zombies out here every five minutes. Yeah. They, they did a very good job, like, Walking Dead initially did. Like, I mean, yeah, I know I compared it to it last week, but it's like the... Thing the, the world is dead, but you don't have to see it all the time to be reminded the world is dead. I mean, it's almost like kind of seeing a glimpse of the world you used to have was actually better because it's like you went from Boston to Kansas City, and then you see Jackson, Wyoming, is actually still functioning. You're like, oh wow, like oh, there's just your civilization that that, and then kind of how as soon as Joel gets there, he's like, okay, I'm gonna breathe for a second. <laughs> My favorite thing, I was like, hey, how long would it take Rick's crew to destroy Jacksonville? No, they would be thinking, I know they got these walls and guns and horses, but I don't think they're safe enough. So we got to take it over. <laughs> got to take it over and burn it to the ground. <laughs> but, oh, gosh. but yeah, an actual society that worked, nobody scheming to take it over. I mean, it's just... I think that's the cool thing about this concept. It's not like a bunch of people coming around trying to invade towns. It's just, hey, if you happen to find a settlement, you better get in where you fit in and you're good. Now, there's a wild, wild west component to it as well, where it's just the outlaw territory. You got these militia groups running wild, but that's not the norm and that's not the case everywhere. Yeah. I like because you do hear it's like kind of, hey, I mean, like if somebody comes and tries this, we make an example of them versus we're, we're getting, uh, we, we hand them out our supplies just because they're Negan screw kind of deal, which <laughs> I mean, it's like, Hey, we, you know, that makes a whole lot more sense. It's like, nah, there's a whole lot more. Unlike walking dead, it's probably easier to get infected in this side versus them. So it's like, you can have one guy. Oh, I'm not, I'm not bit. And then all of a sudden it just takes out your whole town. So it's going to be, I, I, again, I had, again, especially for somebody who hasn't played episodes like this one are very good. Cause I'm like, I actually think I know what should happen, but I can't guarantee what will happen. So that was really refreshing. And I need you to fix that though. I mean, there's, there's 10 games that you really have to play if you own a PlayStation and the last of us is clearly one of them. It's, yeah. it's, on, it's right here. It, it literally just press download. It would really be played. You need to, don't be afraid. Press the button. Push the button. Because no. it's, it's. I don't feel like it's super long, but it's really engaging. You get sucked in the whole way through. And this episode ends with something that I was like, oh, shoot, when I was playing the game. And it was such a beast to play. I think that's something that as I'm watching the show, I'm like, gosh, you, you don't know how hard it was to get to this point. All those infected, all those people just to get here. It's like, oh. So in a way, you're getting cheated out of some of the action, but it would make for a very boring video game if there weren't enough action set pieces. And I think the show is doing a good job of making you care about the characters. Even if you see them for one episode, you saw Tommy's wife, Bertina Wesley, and that was cool just to see that he's moved on, he's doing his thing, and he's happy to see his brother. But I'm not going with you, player. I got a little one in the oven, and good luck with yours. I, I like that dynamic. It's like, hey, uh, I want, I, I love you, bro, but you bring a little drama, and I can't have that now. 
it's like I have like truly moved on. It's like you're in Boston, you're safe, but I think it's time for us to cut bait because I'm not coming across country to see. I ain't going, I ain't making that road trip. Like, yeah. And another thing that I continue to love about this show is how every episode, if you wanted to, you could go, hey, Emmy voters, here's my nomination for The Last of Us this week. And Pedro Pascal is so amazing in this show. And we got to see something we rarely see with these action shows where the lead is just completely, dude, I can't do this. I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to fail. I'm afraid I'm going to fail. He's like tearing, tearing up. And it's just like, that's real. And it doesn't make him some chump loser. He's just like, I'm not Superman. I can't do this. This little kid almost got me. I didn't need her to save me. And what's going to happen later on down the road? And it was foreshadowing because he just take it out. And mm-hmm. it's just like, well, now she's going to have to survive on her own. But for how yeah, long? That was, that was the kind of foreshadow I had. I mean, it was like, oh, yeah, that's just, you know, talk. And then you see it at the end, you're like, oh, wow. I Again, like I said, especially from somebody who who's never played the game, I think this is where this, the cliffhanger made it so much because I'm like, I'm not sure he has to survive. I'm like, <laughs> any other, if like this was some other show, I'd be like, oh, he's fine. This is just, you know, oh, Glenn's going to be fine. Oh, Rick's going to, he's going to wake up. No problem. Joel, I don't know if he's going to survive because Joel is essential, but he's not real. He's not 100% essential. So I, I'm wondering what, what happens. It's interesting because I think this could have been a really effective season finale if they had more episodes earlier on. Now, I'm not one to say, let's not do action in a, show with zombies and with crazy people but mm-hmm. i would have happily just watched joel and ellie hanging out with that couple from the opening segment they were so fun i was like you know what y'all can get snowed <laughs> in and we can listen to them bicker and argue i was like this is such a great little cameo and i was fine if they spent the entire episode there i mean it's like after last week's because i know how like some people are like oh this is a quiet episode but those two bickering and comedy would have been a slow down especially after last week's heavy ending you could if like just him joel kind of and, and now ellie just having a second to breathe that would have been fine like yeah so. and it was three months after the whole ordeal from the last episode and i like that because we don't have to watch the full grieving but you could tell that that really affected both of them and it wasn't a case of eh, whatever we lost some people we didn't really care we just knew them really quickly like it those deaths are meaningful on the show where it's not just a thing of yeah well you know that's what happens out here it had real meaning yeah i think i know i glossed over but just actually having your actual lead character not be invincible actually gives everybody buying it's like if because if you can't see yourself in a character i mean even like heck even like Superman, you can like, hey, he's got to take five minutes and can't save the world all the time, even though he's a power. He's like, he's got to sit back, get some sleep, kind of, oh, I get it. But if you got a guy who just can't do any, just, just is like invincible all the time, it's just like, eh, I'm, I'm over this. Like, I can, exactly. I can make a Betamax work in 2020. Stop it. We're not going to, no, we're not going to miss you. We're not going to miss you for listening <laughs> to this episode. So, Chief has joined us now, bro shot. Chief. What did you think about this this week's episode of The Last of Us? It was it was a it was a decent episode. Um, um you learned a lot about uh, <laughs> uh Pedro's character. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, being you know just being a killer, taking care of the girls. Like, you, you realize now he's he's in it for a penny. He's in it for a pound now. He's he's got feelings for the girl. Um, you know. Uh, they're they're building their bond on their way to this uh uh to find the fireflies here um <laughs> and uh they you know it's funny because you think they would have just been like yo uh this is a nice town we're gonna stay here <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean like, they've got movie I'm, theaters yeah man because I'm thinking to myself if the world around me just went horribly wrong 
And after all the traveling and the things I had to do and clickers and, I mean, um, that big ass thing coming from the ground on the other side before. <laughs> Bloater, yeah. <laughs> What's it called? A loader? heads. Like, whoa. Yeah, so um, if you give me a town that I don't, I'm, you know, I mean, hell, he had his own house. They gave him a house. I'm like, uh, here we are, Bella. Let's wait for somebody to find us. <laughs> um, maybe the fireflies will come to us. Yeah, <laughs> maybe they'll come to us. So um, Maybe they have a doctor that they won't get killed here. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, it's too many. And then the thing about it is also, it's not enough ammo to go around. Like, he's got one gun on the hip. He's got one rifle on the shoulder. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you lost all your supplies and your guns when you crashed into Kansas. When you went to that Kansas thing. And I don't know why the hell you would go inside that city anyway. I'd have parked my car outside the city and tried to sneak in. So you I was trying to get to the other side of the tunnel. I, I get it, man. But you got to do some recon. You can't just drive <laughs> into, you know what I'm saying? You can't just drive into a town no more. It's not, you got to come in and you got to look around and be like, okay, are we going to be okay going in here? Um, and driving a car into an unknown city is, you might as well have just, you know, shot a flare gun in the air. We're here. Come take from us. Yeah. So um, this episode, this episode, like I said, they had all the, you know, they had alcohol. I mean, they were, you know, just, it was just good living, man. They had a bar and they had ice. Yeah. 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 I'm looking and I'm like, hold on, man. They're doing pretty well there. And I'm like, uh, you know what? The cure is here. (laughs) (laughs) The cure is here. The cure is not to be infected. And my friends, listen, uh, let's spend the rest of our days here. You know, even on some list, Shorty, when you get older, you can go out on your own. You know what I mean? Like, it's still going to be with you. years old. Yeah, I mean, she's what? As long as I'm watching you, you're going to stay here. (laughs) Yeah, like, listen, we can do this in another five years when you're more capable, you're you're shooting a gun, you're less, you know, we can. When you hit the target. Yeah. So, um, cause you know, she was firing off the back of the horse, just missing. Like by the time we went back out or if, if you go back out with another person, when you fire off the back of the horse, you can hit something. You've been practicing that. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just going to like, like I said, man. Um, and then, you know, what happened? He went out there, they got overpowered. He got shanked. He's passed out on the railroad tracks. Um, and she can't, uh, you know, she can't lift him. And Tommy, you know, he stayed behind. He got a baby on the way. I, you know, so I'm just There's looking no like, I don't know how he gets out of this. No and and yeah, that's what I'm saying. So look, and Tommy was the smart one. I'd have been like, uh, you he know, was. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy said, I want no parts of this. And you know, Tommy no said, Hey, I'll go if you don't want to go. But if you Bro. now that you're gone, I'll... <laughs> look, look I'll... the first episode said it all for me. That would have been it for me. When the first episode trying to, you remember, it was like 40 of them coming at him. And um, I'd have never left the safe place again. They'd have been like, man, you gonna go into that forest? Oh, no, no, so I'm not. <laughs> I mean, like, no especially way. like Boston was, you know, had its bad regime. But as soon as I got to Jackson, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. We aren't leaving here. Especially after Kansas. The ground erupted and all these jokers came out. Yeah, man, the clickers. And you know what also got me about that? Because last time we talked, I hadn't seen the clickers episode. That well, the, the Kansas City episode. Um, you guys were talking about it, and I was kind of listening, like, hey, I don't know what's going on here. And then I, I sat down, I finally watched them all. And uh I noticed the hesitance. Uh, like, so the ground erupted, everybody turned around to shoot the things coming out the ground. And they still crouch down behind the car. Me personally, once everybody turned around, hey, I'm headed for the water. I'm a, I'm a duck. I'm starting to swim across that 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 river there. You not, you know what I mean? None of that is going to happen for me. So they, you know, they waited and they waited, and then, uh, you know, that's how my man got bit, little little youngin. Uh, y'all supposed to head for the house. He was shooting people. As soon as those things erupted out the ground, everybody's attention got turned. I'm gone. You ain't got to say twice. We don't need no run coordinator. 
nothing. <laughs> I am gone. And the guys are going to run now. Right. Now. You know what I mean? And I'm looking, I'm like, yeah, what are y'all waiting for? That's what I'm screaming at the TV. What y'all waiting for? And they just kind of <laughs> chilled behind the car and, you know, it happened what it happened, man. Hey, man, and the like little I kids. Said, I don't mind when little kids make poor strategic decisions on shows. Yeah, but my man, the black yeah. dude, man, the older black dude, he should have been like, let's go. I'd have hey, grabbed man. the boy's hand and we would have been running. Um, he wasn't like that said, much older. Hey, yeah, but he's, old he's enough small to... enough. You can put him on your back, but like, nah, right. let's move. And, and plus he had outsmarted the group for what? Uh, 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 two weeks now at that point? Yeah. But those, those so, clickers what, what? are a force of nature. They just yeah, come out no like dummy. But like I said, this episode, man, it was pretty good, man. They had a whole community. And that's where I would have stayed. I would, listen, they always... The Fireflies for such a big organization or for such a... They're so far apart from one another, which I didn't understand. So the, uh, you you go somewhere and you see Firefly symbols and this and that. It's like a subway, man. There are all these different franchise owners. Yeah, but they're too far apart. They're too far apart. Like, like who the hell, if you need them, who the hell is going to make a two-week trip? Hey, man, carrier pigeons are doing amazing things these days. Listen, you got to catch a carrier pigeon. <laughs> and then, you, you know what I mean? You can't just go outside and there's a carrier pigeon waiting. I don't, like, when's the last time you seen a pigeon in your neighborhood? Not too often. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, this episode was pretty good, man. Um, it, Like I said, it wasn't a... It wasn't an, an infected episode, but at the same time, it 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 you know it showed there could be a paradise, and you could have stayed there. Which I, <laughs> I listen, I, I'd have been like these blankets, this bed, warm showers. I mean, and this is after three months of been going out west in the cold. I don't know how the heck they did that without a car. It's like so as soon as you get the chance, you're gonna tape du- you're duct taping your boot to actually yeah. feel some feeling. <laughs> You want me to leave? <laughs> Ellie, yeah, that would be, be like a hard conversation. Like, all right, Joe, we got to go. Do we? Just imagine, like, in that, in those worlds, the Walking Dead world, this environment here, the absolute terror that must be sleeping outside at night. Um, you know, even even matter of fact, uh, the house where the uh the the two guys live, and he's like, we left the windows open so we couldn't stink, and I would have been like, you know what? This is a fine place. This is a fine house here. I'd have, you know what I mean? I would went in there, found some Vicks, put that thing under my nose, went in there, collected them bodies and buried them. And you know what I mean? Like, because he had a nice setup too. That he did. He had surveillance. He had security. He had surveillance. You couldn't he had look, strawberries. You take the spot. I was like, yo, this is a nice little, nice little quaint house. They was eating. They was drinking uh, expensive wines, eating steak. I mean, you see the last dinner they had. <laughs> Like, yo, bro, they had it made there. And then you had all the, like, all the guns. You had all the guns, all the things you needed to build a better security uh, system outside that joint. And, I, you know, it's not like people are traveling. It's raiders traveling. But the raiders are coming in, what, seven, eight people at a time? So it's not like people are traveling in droves outside these cities. Yeah, you so set up you some knew, good traps, they're done. Right, so you know if you had to fight somebody off, it is a just a small party yeah. that you have to fight off. And the way they, they seem like these things don't necessarily travel. They kind of stick around the cities looking for people to infect. That's where the fungus directs them. Hey, don't worry about stragglers out in the woods. We're going to stick to these major cities and we're going to kill the people in the cities. Like so rats. you yeah, so you had to, you know, you you had the freedom around there. You in that type of world, man, you can't keep giving up your your damn safe spots. <laughs> I'm so, on base. Yeah, so and and look, look, and to to get a to the, get a cure, look, the world's over. That's it. You don't need no cure. Nah, you People tried are, it one time with Sam. I, I guess that's it. It's not you know what I mean? Jeff, you, I mean, like you know, it was like kind of all right. When leaving uh, the first place, it's like okay, I, I'm I'm honoring Tess, but then I think after Kansas, I'd have been like, 
I think I can honor Tess a different way. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what? Tess isn't going to tell me how disappointed she is right now. And I'll see you at the crossroads. And I can't understand <laughs> why he doesn't want to tell anybody that Tess died. He you told know, Tommy. Tess. She's, she's okay. And I'm thinking to myself, why don't you just tell her Tess is dead, man? He didn't want to get into it. Well, you know, sometimes you got to get into it, man. You know, when you escape Kansas, you got to speak to somebody. You got to speak uh, the truth after. I'm a, I survived Kansas and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Exactly. And I've just been like, yo, Tess dead. How she died. You know, she died by fungus, man. The rest of the way the rest of us. How you, you think? Know what I mean? So hmm. it, it is what it is, man. Um, And like I said, you know, you got a town where, hey, you know, they having babies out there. So you figure eventually, you know, as the town gets bigger, as more people procreate, you build a bigger town and maybe, you know, you're out in the middle of the wilderness. So I don't know, man, but I, I wouldn't have left. And then uh, the other part was you keep going to these cities, to these places, and you see that there's no lookouts there. There's nobody there to greet you. There's no fireflies there. In this, in that ap uh, apocalyptic world, if there's no guards sitting out there, there's no dude like, hey, who you come to see when you first approach a place? Who you uh, be with? I'm, I'm kind of yeah. gone. I'm like, it's, it's tw yeah, this is like 20 years after the world is fell. So it's like, if you see a college town where it's not a bunch of infected or a bunch of people, you see the little monkeys running around, that's their town. You don't need to be there. It's over. Yeah. I'd have been like, hmm. There's nobody out here, no scout looking for no advanced scout late like, seeing who's coming. Uh yeah, let's go. They're not here. So you wanna look around? <laughs> no. But uh, you know, a good episode, a good series, man. Um, and it's funny because I've never played the video game, but I follow a dude named Rad Brad on YouTube. And I watch him play video games, which sounds kind of weird, right? When you're watching a dude play video games, but He's just, you know, I watched him play the video game. So I've seen this video game being played. And these bands halfway through the story. So this is the first one. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, so we'll see what happens, man. But yeah, mm -hmm. this it's it's it, it was a good look, look. Uh it's it's been a good uh it's been a good couple of episodes and the uh the monsters look real. It's not no she hulk. CGI <laughs> run around. I'm sorry, she hoke. I had to take another dig. I hated you. I hated you. All right. So yeah. All right. Well, since you transitioned us over there, the Marvel Cinematic Universe had its latest film come out last Friday, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania, and it's still doing really terrible on Rotten Tomatoes. It's joined Eternals as the only MCU film to have a rotten rating. Let me check to see what it is as of this time. Because it's pretty bad. It was like, yikes. Why do people you, not like this movie? Did you see it? I did see it. Jace, where can you see my review? On livesmovie5.com. Damn. So it's 49% right now on Rotten Tomatoes, which means people are not loving it. Okay. Jace. But what a, what a, is it the highest grossing uh, Marvel uh, fan reaction? You want to know what the, the fans are saying about it. Okay. So <laughs> it is exactly the mirror image of itself. So mm -hmm. as of right now, it's 48% critics, 84% audience score. So what's that tell you? That people critics fans aren't mad fans of the Marvel Universe? Like people went and saw it off the cuff, off some separate. Uh, entity not part of the whole. I don't um, know. I think that's a real nice disparity between the two. Yeah, I'm wondering if a lot of critics are burnt out on the MCU. I, I, I mean, I think that's probably what it is. And it's like, oh, okay, because it's like I was, I read a couple of like the little headlines on it, and it was like, oh, it's not like the same movie. But it's like, didn't you say and complain about all these movies being the same all the time? Oh, it's so formulistic. Oh, yada yada. I'm like. But you're now complaining when they actually do something, keeps the same kind of tone. You have comedy, you have action, but oh, he's not as fun and carefree as he was in the other one. So, so isn't that what you want? You would have, you if you would have saw a third movie like that, you would have complained. Oh, it's more of the same. 
yada, 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 and probably gave it the same score. I have a question for you. So I wrote this in my review. I'm wondering if they didn't deviate too much, but instead of having Ant-Man in Quantumania, they put Thor. The Thor who we had watched from Infinity War, the Thor who regained his fighting shape at the end of Endgame and into Love and Thunder, which we'll ignore for right now. If that was the Thor follow-up, do you think that would have worked out better? Or do you think it didn't matter? And say Ant-Man has more of that jokey, we're going to just tell jokes the whole time, like Love and Thunder. I don't think anyone would have cared because Ant-Man is just in that realm anyway. But Thor felt so weird seeing that great character from Infinity War then kind of go through this whole depression phase through most of Endgame and then become a hero again. And we're like, oh, cool. We're going to get the Infinity War Thor, who's more advanced, who's evolved, and now he's going to see him in this new movie, Love and Thunder. And then it was like all jokes all the time. So what do you think? I, mean, I know I, you I, love I, Love and Thunder, so. Well, when you wrote that in your review, I'm like, so... I don't know if I, I don't, I don't think, I, I think I am personally done with the Thor joke movies, like 100%. And I don't, because you, you did need to actually shift the champ tone. So you would almost had to start with Kang basically taking over, like, you know, multiple universes and then get him like, all right, Thor is going to be the one that saves everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, like, and the weird thing is like, Thor and like, the Guardians in that movie, in the, you don't change up too much. You just put Thor and the Guardians and the events of Quantum Mania. Is that I mean, a better Thor movie, or does it not matter because Ant Man did it just fine? I, I mean, I think Ant Man did it fine. I think I still, I don't. I mean, I, the way they won was almost. A, I mean, it was a fluke, which I still kind of like. And he was really good. That that Thor, <laughs> that Kang was really cool, and I would have loved to see that Kang come through. And I know we talk afterwards. You're like. And it's like a thousand Kang variants. So there's one just like him, almost just slightly twist, slightly deviated, not that much. But I, I think I would I think almost like against Thor, you would have almost wanted to see a real knockout fight. And I don't think Thor could have won almost fluke. He would have had to beat him or get killed off. Well, what and I'm saying is. Thor and the Guardians, not just Thor. I mean, we saw Thor rip through Thanos' squad. He killed Thanos eventually. And with the Guardians by his side, and they're not on joke mode 24-7, they're up there fighting, doing the thing. So it's not just Cassie, Wasp, and a bunch of ants. It's Thor and the Guardians mm -hmm. and those revolutionary fighters they've got with them instead. I'm not saying put... Gore the God Butcher against Scott Lang. I'm just saying, instead of yeah, yeah, yeah Love yeah, and Thunder, yeah, yeah. we yeah. have the Quantum Mania story, and it's just Thor Quantum Mania. Um, Shoot, if you want to, you could just do a whole another Thor Ragnarok and have him team up with another Avenger, Thor, Ant Man, and the Guardians. Well, Thor, I mean, Wasp, Ant Man, like, you mean, like is you, like we saw like in a, a second trailer, like at some point Loki's kind of scared of this dude. I mean, because it's like Loki understands who he actually is. I think you could have almost put Loki back in it, like, hey, you know, Thor, yes, I am your brother. Yes, I'm the one you missed, you know, who got that cue. But here's the problem. We got a problem. I need you to come to the quantum realm and deal with this guy because we don't have any clue in the time variant, time universe how to deal. That's probably a better, I mean, I think that would have been a better story for Thor. I think I... Okay, I enjoyed. Yeah, um, no, Quantumania. I enjoy Quantum Mania too. I just I thought as I was watching it, boy, this this is a story that Thor from Infinity Game and Endgame needed, not yeah. so much Ant Man. But I love that pre credit ending sequence where he's like, "Yeah, everything's fine," but wait, didn't he say everything was going to go haywire? Hmm, did we just mess everything up? Yeah. Nah, it was fine. I thought that was very much on brand for Scott Lang. Of course not. <laughs> All right. Well, fellas, it is that magical time of the week. Who are your nominees for Dummy of the Week? Bro Shot, who you got? Okay. I got uh, my Dummy of the Week is anybody who thinks the NBA All-Star scoring record means anything anymore. Because next year, it's going to be 95 points to somebody scores because they don't even play, even act like it's defense. It's 
hey, would you like to do a layup? Sure, I can do a layup. I mean, it, it's it's just a laughable game. I mean, I, I and yes, I'm gonna date myself. I remember seeing Magic Johnson's final All Star game where they're actually deeing up people. Yes, the score is 130 points, but it's like it's the best dudes doing it. So right. there's not a Cliff <laughs> Levingston. No, I love Cliff, but you know, one of my bulls. But it's like there's no 12th man on that team, and this one is like, hey, would you like to go? Oh, are you gonna let him run to the court from half court? Sure, no problem. Oh, you're gonna shoot 93s? Yeah, no problem. It's like. Just if, if we're going to make it to this point where all of the sports team all-star games aren't even competitive, just do away with them. Just give them the 30 top guys in honor. Hey, you know, you're an all-star. Help your contract. And and just call it. Like the, it it's just do the skills competition, the celebrity game, and we don't even need to bother with the all-star game. Yeah, get get, get three-point contest and let some G League dude uh, get 100 grand who actually really wants 100 grand to win slam dunk contest. Yeah. All right, well, my nominee is the one that you sent me. Warner Brothers is saying we're going to get more Lord of the Rings films. And I am so perplexed because the reaction to Power of the Rings has not been awesome. And people aren't clamoring for more seasons of that, which would seem to make me think no one cares about more movies. But like they bled that franchise movie-wise dry with the three Hobbit movies, which the three Hobbit movies, which they didn't need, they could have made that two and called it a day. And then maybe there's still be an appetite. But now we're like, hey, guys, I know y'all want to go back to Middle Earth. And I'm like, not so much, actually. I'm really good on those three. Those are great movies. Some of my favorites. But I don't need to see anything else. So that's why they're my dummy of the week. Chief, you got anybody? No, sir. All right. Well, <laughs> That wraps up things pretty quickly and easily. I cannot wait for, I saw this latest trailer for John Wick 4 and I'm all about that film. Fast X. There's a lot of good movies coming out. Creed 3 in the next few weeks. It's unusual for March because March is normally a slow period. We have to wait till May, but March is going to be on fire. So cannot wait for all those. Chief, we're looking forward to hearing your review of Quantum Mania next week. <laughs> yes. I'm I'll, I'll make screen. sure I have it for you. There you go. All right, fellas. Thank you as always for rolling with me. Thank you all there for watching and listening. This episode of Lyle's Movie Files has been filed.